So we're going to uh, take a look at calculating the uh, upper and lower sums of a uh, uh, for finding the area under a curve here. Um, so let's see what we got going. We're going to do the parabola x squared. Um, and we're going to go from 0 to 3. And uh, we'll do an example with a fixed number of in, in our partition. And we're going to say that we're going to partition it into five equal intervals. And so to figure out what the length is going to be, our delta x, our widths are going to be um, the distance divided by 5 for the number of uh, intervals we want in our partition. So each part is going to be 3 fifths. We'll go ahead and put that in on our graph. We'll approximate 3 fifths. Okay. So there we are. And uh, we'll look at our partition as 0, and then 3 fifths, 6 fifths, 9 fifths, 12 fifths, and 15 fifths, which is also 3. And uh, we're going to calculate our lower sum, which is going to be the lower rectangles. And uh, because this is an increasing function, because this is an increasing function, the lower sum is going to use the left endpoints as the height of the rectangles. Okay, so we're going to use the left endpoints, and those are zero, three fifths, six fifths, nine fifths, and twelve fifths. And um, our index is going to run from i equals one all the way to five. <clears throat> And if we're doing the, the left ones, the left endpoints, we're going to use I minus 1 um, and then times uh, the width of a particular rectangle. So the height of a rectangle is going to be I minus 1 times the width of a, of a rectangle. And that's going to, that's going to determine the left endpoint there. So if I plug I equals 1 in, we get, we get 0. I equals 2, we got 2 minus 1, which is 1 times 3, which will give me the 3 fifths, and then uh, it'll work out for the rest of them. Okay. And that f of I minus 1 times 3 fifths, that is the height of each uh, rectangle for our lower sums. Okay, so I'm going to draw in my, uh, my lower sums. So you see those blue lines there connecting and we're making these lower rectangles. So this is going to be an underestimate of the uh, area here. Um, and the actual area will be between the upper and lower sums. So using the upper rectangles and the lower rectangles. Um, so again, our width is going to be, uh, of each rectangle is going to be 3 fifths. So to find area of a rectangle, it is just length times width. So again, the width of each uh, rectangle is 3 fifths. And so when I calculate the lower sum, I'm just going to be adding up uh, the area of all those five uh, um, rectangles. Okay. So then this is just a whole bunch of algebra. So our function squares everything. Um, so this this three fifths is going when we square it, it comes nine over twenty five. And then I'm gonna have to foil the i minus one squared. So that's gonna be i squared minus two i plus one, and we got that three fifths attached there. Um, now <clears throat> the um, the constants we can pull out. Um, so nine times three is gonna be twenty seven. Twenty five times five is one hundred twenty five, and then we have that sum i equals. 1 to 5 of i squared minus 2i plus 1. And um, we have formulas for the sum of the squares. We have formulas for, for the sum of the i's and, and the formula for adding up 1 five times. All right, so 27 over 125 is just hanging out in front. That should say 125. 
We will fix that there. Okay. And I'm just using the formula for the I squared. And the formula is n n plus 1 2 n plus 1 all over 6. That's the formula for adding up uh, a sum of I squareds from 1, 1 to n. In this case from 1 to 5. So our n is 5 here. Okay, so we're 6 minus 2 and then the formula we're using there for adding up the i's is, is n, n plus 1 over 2, and then we had this pre-existing negative 2, so that it's hanging out there in the front. And then if I add up uh, 1 5 times, it's going to be 5. Okay, And uh, I'm going to just throw that all in my calculator, and uh, it's going to give me 6.48. So our lower sum is going to be bounded by uh, 6.48. Um, so um, my, my lower sum is, is not going to be anything lower than 6.48, so it's probably going to be higher. And we're going to play the same game to find the upper sum. The upper sum uses the right hand, uh, right endpoints, uh, which is easier to find because we don't have to do the i minus 1. We just use just i. Now over here, I am drawing in my upper rectangles. And we will see that uh, my upper rectangles are going to be an over approximation of the area. So the actual area is going to be between the upper and lower uh, sums. So the upper sum, we're going to use the right endpoints. So that'd be the three fifths, six fifths, nine fifths, twelve fifths, and fifteen fifths. Okay, and Again, our height is determined by our function, the square function. So we want to go, in order to get those right endpoints, we're going up by 3 fifths. So we need 3 fifths in there. And if i is equal to 1, then we get 3 fifths. i equals 2, we get 6 fifths, etc. So this, this models it correctly. Our width, again, is uh, 3 over 5. And we'll go ahead and put that into our uh, upper sum. So sum from 1 to 5, so there's our heights times our widths, and we're just adding up those rectangles, their area. Okay, so 27 over 125, just like before, and then all we have this time is just I squared, so this is a little bit nicer. So 27 over 125, and then the I squared formula is n, n plus 1, 2n plus 1, all over 6 throw that into our calculator and we get uh, 11.88 and that is our upper bound for our area. So our area, our actual area is going to fit between 11.88 and 6.48 so the idea here with this with integration here is we're going to use even more rectangles. The more rectangles we use the um, the better approximation we get. And what's going to happen is the upper and the lum, uh, upper and lower sums are going to converge on the same number, and that's what we define the area to be uh, under the curve there, and that's what we we'll call the definite integral. Okay, so let's do it generically now, uh, not with uh, five partitions or five intervals in our partition, but let's do it with um, with n. Okay. Okay, so our delta x is going to be the length of the interval divided by the number of pieces. Okay, so it'll be 3 over n, and that's also going to be the width of our, uh, of our rectangles. So our lower, our, our lower um, sum is going to use the left end point, so it would be 0, and then 3 over n, and 6 over n, all the way to 3n over 3, which would be... Three, which gets us to the end of the interval and I want those indices to start at 1 and then 2 and then 3 so here we have 0 and 1 coupled up so that tells me I want to use this I minus 1 again so it's going to be I minus 1 times the length of or times the width which would be 3 over n and that's what we're going to plug in uh, into our function so our height 
is determined by uh, 3 times i minus 1 over n. So that's just inputting the left end points, and then the function will calculate us the height. Okay, so our lower sum is just adding up all those lower rectangles. Okay, so there's the height times the width. Um, and then we're going to square the uh, function squares its uh, input. Um, okay, um, now we have 3 squared is 9 times this 3, which will give me 27, and then I'll have n q, uh, squared times n, which will give me n cubed. And uh, our summation is going, what's running with it is the i, so we can factor out the n because it's fixed. Okay, and then we foil that i minus 1 squared, and now we can apply our uh, our formula. So 27 over uh, n cubed is just hanging out in front. So there's my i squared. There's my 2 times i. And then adding up 1 n times gives me n. Um, and what I'm going to go ahead and do is uh, kind of expand out everything inside the parentheses there. Notice we have minus n and n, so those are going to cancel each other out. Then I'll distribute the 27n cubed out, and then write each, each piece separately. And this is a lot like finding like the horizontal as asymptotes or taking the limit as, as n goes to infinity. Um, so if the um, if the degree of the denominator is larger, then it's going to go to zero. So, <clears throat> all of this stuff right here, that's just going to go to zero because um, 27 divided by a huge number is very small. 9 divided by a huge number is small. 27 divided by a huge number is all small. So this is going to uh, approach, or its limit is, is going to be 9 as we let n go to infinity and that means we're using more and more rectangles so our widths of our rectangles are getting finer and finer and finer so they they can be as small as we desire the upper sum is going to be less work because the right end points are easier to do um, so the height is going to be determined by the right end points inputted into the function so that'd be 3i over n the width is going to be 3 over n for each rectangle Okay, uh, let's put our square in right there, and uh, so we have something similar, 9 over n squared, i squared, times 3 over n. So we're going to factor out the 9 times 3, which is 27, and the n squared times n, which is n cubed. Those are not moving at the, at the time when we're using the summation. And we're just going to be adding up the i squareds, so 27 over n cubed times n, n plus 1, 2n plus 1, all over 6. And we already did all this work right here. We did this multiplication. Did right here. It's those three terms. Okay? So we already did most of that work, so um, we don't need to show all of it again because we, we just did it. Okay? And we'll go ahead and write all of this out again. And then we'll reduce and we'll see what we have left. So we have 9 plus 27 over 2n plus 9 over 2n squared. And that's going to go to 9 as n goes to infinity. So you see that our lower and upper sums both go to the same place. So we can, this, the way we define the area is um, where the upper and lower sum go to, and that's 9. So that's the area under x squared bounded by the x-axis between the vertical lines x equals 0 and x equals 3. Okay? Um, it, it's a lot of work, so, you know, we have a lot of appreciation for the fundamental theorem of calculus, which allows us to not deal with all of these uh, upper and lower sums. And then uh, the Riemann sums are a little bit nicer. What the Riemann sums allow us to do is they just allow us to use the right-hand endpoint every time. Um, 
And uh, so then we don't have to fuss with both the lower and the upper sums. We can just use the right endpoints of our partition, and uh, and uh, that, that'll make it a little bit nicer.